Kenneth, tell us about yourself. Hello, my name is Kenneth Wrights. I am a board member for the PSF. I also work at DigitalOcean. I previously worked at Jonin at the most beloved company in the world, Heroku. Uh, they're my favorite ex coworker. We uh, miss you. Yeah, it's been five days. Yeah. And uh, I'm still there in spirit. Five days of mostly just crying. Uh, a little, there, there, for was, me. there was some tears. Just sobbing. I, I did tear. Yeah. I did. It's a real hard thing. You've been with the company for seven years? Six and a half. Six and a half years. Yeah. Yeah. And Kenneth also wrote a thing one time that is probably pretty popular in the Python community. Yes, HTTP uh, for humans requests. Requests. Yes, and That's the other popular thing right now is pipm. Oh, I heard pipm is real good. Yeah, I, I think so. I've been using it, and it's actually been really helpful for me. But everyone that I, I come along with is trying to teach me a different way. Like every, every person I ask about setting up my envi environment uh, tells me a different way to do it. Yeah, it'll... So I actually had one already. I know, I removed it. We're starting from scratch. Oh, okay. So I already have some files here that just have nothing in them but like the, the rules and a test harness. I didn't, remove, I didn't delete the directory. I just deleted the virtual app. Oh, okay. That but way we don't have any dependencies installed. Oh, we want a, we I want see. a clean environment. Yes, so the app. only things that we had installed were requests and crans, but they're still in the pip file, so they're being installed right now. That's fine. Okay. As long as we have a fresh virtual app. All right. I don't want any junk from someone else's project. <laughs> we didn't actually install anything, I don't think. All right, now we're in the pipm shell. Do we have to do it in the pipm shell? Because I don't think we'll get vimrc or bashrc or anything if we do it in here. Vimrc, yeah, we will. We'll get vimrc? <laughs> OK, but we won't get the bash. That's fine. I can cope with that. So what I've set up, uh, speaking of cruft, Oh, well, let's do something before we start, please. All right, so we're going to export Python don't write byte code equals one. That, that will got, get rid of that directory so we don't have to deal with Python byte code anymore. So, what's in the PyCache directory is actually byte code for hot code paths. Yeah. And it's being saved and then run from there. Yeah. And I don't want that because it will cause... It's fine. It's just annoying. It's annoying to have a PyCache thing. Yeah. I'm just going to delete I like, my... I'm a purist. Swap files. Uh, pot. What's... No, no. Wait, I'm not going to do this. Uh, I'm just going to go back. I can't, though. I have to foreground the session from here. Okay, fine. Stop it. Okay, and then I would say pipm shell, and now I'm in the environment that you've just created again. Yes. And now I can go back into Vim, and we are here, and we're looking at this thing, which is an empty file, it's what Conway rules, and a test file right here. Uh, we're not doing TDD, are we? We aren't now, because you just said those words. So instead, we're just going to write as fast as we can or want to. But it is pairing, so... If it turns into watch Kenneth write code, then that's not as interesting for me, and I'm going to yawn a lot. It doesn't. Well, it's doing A's when I do my arrows. Well, you shouldn't use arrows in Vim. Oh come on! You can't. You got to make this friendly. I don't know how. There's a Vim king to do that. It, it's. Well, what I got to do? L J K. Yeah, H J. I'm in insert mode. Well, you don't need to go up and down in this. Okay. Yes, All right. you do. All right, let's figure out how to do this. Um, Can we just use like Vim without your Vim, <laughs> VimRC? My VimRC is empty. That's the problem. Is like there's something in the VimRC I think that is supposed to do this. Can we, can we use Sublime Text? Here. Hitting arrow keys adds characters in the editor. This thing is you how we fix set, it. Set a mode. If you don't have a VimRC. Set no compatible. We don't have to edit that. We can just set it. No, I'm, I'm definitely going to change that because we had problems with it on the last one. I did not understand how many people use arrow keys in Vim. The arrow keys are like, you know, the way you move around in a computer, typically. Ah, uh, yes. If you're not a Vim user, I understand that argument. Do you have any Emacs users yet? <laughs> I haven't had any Emacs users yet. All right. So here's our... Oh, I'm sorry. I hit an arrow key. Oh, that's okay. Set. No compatible. compatible. Right quit, right exit, oh. Can we open a shell on the right? Uh, we, don't have, we don't have a mouse, do we? Yeah, let's do that. 
but this is going to have to also be in the pip amp. You type, I'll watch. Okay. And so you can switch back and forth with command and the um, square brackets. Okay, or command tab. No. Command tab will not switch you from the terminal to the. So how do I do it? Square brackets. Command square brackets? Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Alright, so pip and install. Uh, we got requests and crayons. Yeah. Alright, first thing I want to do now that I have this. Now you just typed it at that time. That wasn't Bim's fault. We're going to make a class. I'm used to, I'm used to sublime text. All right, we're going to do a class. And what are we talking about? What's our business object? Right, live with, uh, cell. Cell. All right. We have a new cell, and we have an init, and it takes self, and it uses some unnecessary superfluous dunders on the end. I'm just very pleased with myself that I learned that those are not strictly necessary. Which one? The second set of dunder. The, the underscores after a method. In order for like Python to parse correctly, you don't need the second two underscores. You just need you, the first you, two. You need it. You need both for the magic methods. Oh, for like magic for in it, in it, it needs to be, like dunder in it. Dunder is special. Oh, because we're overriding in it. Yeah. Someone told me that I could just use half of the dunders yesterday. Were they lying? For private methods. Oh, I see. Okay. Yes. All right. Yeah, the, the first set of dunder is what provides private encapsulation. Got it. Yeah. Is that actually like a restriction in the language? Does it actually make that method private, or is it just a way to... It, it hides it. It obfuscates it. Oh, it does. It makes, so it's a little harder to get to. Oh, cool. Yeah. All right. So... I don't know what I'm doing. But, but we're creating an X and a Y for our cells. This seems valid. OK. So a cell is created with position. Are we in an infinite world where a cell can exist at any X and Y? This is really hard. Yeah. If you do an infinite one, it's a harder one. It's a harder version. We could do an infinite plane where the cells can, can live we do anywhere. 16 by 16? We can also do 16 by 16, but in that case, we should probably, yeah, that's fine. That's good. Let's do this. Then we'll, we'll create the cells. We'll give it a width and initial state, probably alive or dead. Yeah. So, so then I'll do a property. Property. This property thing I just learned on my last stream, and it turns the next cool. method into a method you can then call without parentheses. But yeah. the method itself still receives implicit self when you reference it. I'll see you, man. All right. Sign up to pair with me. I still have spots. Yes. All right. Oh, this is so hard. So I will write a property here. No, we don't want that. We don't want a property. Not yet. We want. We, want, we don't want another. We want. We want self dot state. State equals. equals we want an enum. An enum. So you know, let's just do alive. Okay. Equals. Do, are they dead by default? You tell me. You're the one who's been writing this all day. You're the architect. If I influence your decisions, I will lead you to the same very specific You're the domain expert. I've done over and over I again. have to. I have to. They get, start dead. They start dead. So alive equals false. Yeah. All right. So death state. So this is a property then. I told you so. Death state self so return alive. Self dot alive else dead. And you have to return. Okay. All right. Cool. You have to have an else on the end of that. If you're going to use the if at the end of a line, you've got to have the else also, right? You couldn't just have the if. Correct. Okay. I believe. Otherwise, it might have an implicit none, but I'd be surprised. Okay. It would be better to write else none. Yeah, I agree. This is a good line of code. Well done. Okay. So next, I want to have references to my cells next to me. Each cell is going to know who lives next to it. That's what I'd like to do. All right. And if that's the case, then you're in an infinite plane, really. It doesn't matter that you even have a board or a game or a box to put all this stuff in. Because if they know who's next to them, then they all know, as long as there is. I think this is a really stupid them. approach and that I'm going to have infinite recursion. But you're going to immediately regret your choices. But let's keep regretting. But I'm, I'm down. I love regret. So we're going to have 
a cell be able to tell us its neighbors without talking to the data structure that all the cells live in? No, there should be a database. Ah, oh, it's doing it's doing the thing still. Okay, hold on just a sec. I have to escape. I'm gonna do set. What no, is it called? No interactive. No compatible. No compatible. Maybe I didn't. No, it's still doing it. Stack overflow lied. It's okay. I can hit escape when I do arrows. Okay. Except for to get rid of that one. So sublime checks would make me much more efficient at this. How about yeah. Adam? Oh yeah, you you have it up? What are you? Are you just trolling me? I just was let's, trying let's to. Let's write this. All right. Why don't you drive me? Tell me what to type. That way I get to actually do something in this pairing session and you have to navigate and explain your ideas clearly. Because you are the more experienced pair by far. And But I have not had a game of life. You have not written a game of life. But if you drive my hands, literally just tell me what to type. All right, go, go to the top. Okay. Class. No, no. No. List. So just do cells equals, and then, no, no, bracket. And then new line. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay. Yeah. See, we can do this, right? All right. All you right. just have to be very verbal with what you want. All right. So now what you do is... In in it, we add the cell to cells. To cells, yeah. Should cells be a two dimensional array? No, because okay. they have x and y references on them themselves. Okay, so then at the end here, I would say cells dot append, and then append self. Self, yes. Okay. Now, All right, I'm and then we're going to want to have a renderer. A renderer. So on. So I want to make a, a board class. Oh, I'm not doing. Okay, right. We need to have some board. Some class board. Oh, two lines. And, and this has an init. init. Uh, you don't, don't really need init for that. All right, but it definitely need to have a dunder render. string. No, just a def render. Def render, all right. And it takes, actually we just make it a function. And render cells, but we'll do it this way. Uh, yeah, let's let's do this. So yeah, make an init under board. Self gets passed into init. Right. Everything takes self. Self dot cells equals uh, uh, empty list. Now we still want to render. We still want it render. And render takes self. And then pass. That, um, that. And? All right, and then, and then above, so can you move board above cell? All right, now get rid of cells equals. And then underneath board, underneath board, do board equals board instance. Under board. Yeah. We want one instance of board. Yeah. And, and then, then we're going to render it at and the bottom. And then in it, for the cell, we're going to pass in the board reference. So x, y, and board. Yes. If I wanted to, could I do this? Uh, it would instantiate it each time. If I didn't pass it a board, it would create a new board for every cell, which yeah, is incorrect. Yeah, we don't want that. Yeah, right. so I'd be better off to do, okay, yeah. So we want to pass a reference to it each time. Okay. So, so then you want to do, instead of cells.append, you do board.cells.append. Okay. 
and board needs to have a reference to, okay, so this is fine. If I want to yeah. reference it this way, though, I need to make it a property. What? Or is it the cells thing? No, it is no, property it's, now. No, it's, it's an attribute. Okay, and I can, I can reference it this way. Yeah. All right. All right, we're good. This, this, is, this is gonna work. This is gonna work. So we make a new board and... Yeah, do that, yeah. And at some point, we want to then render the board so we can so actually then, run let's, this let's, Python file. So I want to do, on board, do def next. I'm just going to put this down here so we don't forget, so we can actually run this file. On board, we want dunder next or next? Def next. And this will program our step. So each of the ticks that we do on the board. Yes. Okay. Are we going to have a, an immutable board so we're regenerating the board? The problem is that if you Tell change the is an immutable uh, Structure. Immutable structure. So we'll have a new. So make it a, it, Well, it's not an immutable structure, but we're gonna treat it as an immutable structure. Okay. So we'll replace it each time. Okay. Yeah. So, next is going to do pass at a minimum for now. Next, actually. Do we creates, want to render first? Let's just type some comments in here about what this thing does. What this is, it take? I'll just copy the comments from the top. Oh, that's it. Okay. Yeah. These rules here. Uh, Do you have a blank space at the top of your files in Python? I uh, usually have import statements. Yeah, of course. Okay. So then we want the board to be able to render. So when I call board.render, it should do something. Which is, how does the board render? It's got to look at the x, y of everyone. Yeah, for cell. No. Uh, let's see. No, 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 no. Um, We've got to figure out what our maximum X and maximum Y are in order to draw the board. Right? As it's implemented right now, we're still in this infinite space where we could have an X, Y anywhere. And that's fine. I like that idea. But then we've got to figure out what the maximum... Oh, yeah, make the default for X and Y. Set those to none. X equals none, or Y equals none. So move X and Y after board. Because the default arguments will have to be afterwards. Yeah. Actually, there's, there's a hack for that, so don't, you don't have to do that. Oh, I want to learn the hack. Yeah. No, keep going. You're good. You want no space. I don't want space in the equals for these ones. I don't understand when I do and when I don't. Because sometimes it's not an assignment. It's a default. Oh, okay. Whenever it's a default, I don't. So now put an asterisk in where the X is. Asterisk here. And comma. That will eat up any keyword argument. Any um, that'll eat any positional arguments, and it require you to use keyword arguments for all the arguments. Oh. So that way you don't need a default on board. So this star, anytime I pass an argument that doesn't have a keyword X, Y, or board then this sucks them all in here into star and they're lost. I can't regain a reference to them inside this method. Yep. This prevents people from just trying to pass ordered arguments. You must use keyword. Yes, it's a very unknown feature. I like it. It's Python 3 only. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So now we can, that way we can have board be un, undefaulted in after. And anywhere it wants to be because the only thing that can be passed to this method now are keyword arguments. Yes. Cool. And then, so let's do, let's make a new method on board, def. On board, we I have def. I have done it above next, but it's You fine. want to do it above next, I on do. line six? Yeah. Def max height. Max height. Self. All right. And then it's doing max width. It should be very similar. So this is going to so look. This is going to. I, I'm going to. There's fancy ways to do this. I'm going to do it a really stupid way. All right. All right. So do I uh, do v equals zero. 
This is our max. This is our current. All right, so now you do four cell and cell. No, no. Four X in self dot cells. No, sorry. I, I need to type this. But I'll say it. Four X Y. And you can put grip. It'd be best to put uh, friends around that, but it's not required. In self dot cells, oh, for for x y for cell in self dot cells. For x y four. I think that'll work. For cell in self dot cells. I think we might need to put a bracket around. This part. Hang on, let me look at this. This won't work. I need. I need to type. All right, let's just go to Adam. I'll just go to Adam. Real quick. Okay. Um. Gosh, why? Okay. I'm not sure how Adam will like being opened inside of this. Should be fine. Okay. Did you already have the volume open? See, yeah, Adam's real not. Okay. And go for it. Come on, you can do it, Adam. Did it show you how many people are watching? It shows me not oh, only people comments. watching, but we have some comments, yeah. So they're talking about doing the whole board with a list comprehension in there. Okay, yeah. so here is yours, and then mine is going to be over in uh, Vim right here, and we're good. Where's, where's mine? Right here. Okay. Cool. Oh, can you? How do I? How do I get over to the editor? All right. So. You have a So that'll automatically call the X and Y properties off of the cells? No, they're, oh, they're not tuples? A cell is an object that has an X and a Y. We have self.X and self.Y in, in it for a cell. I was thinking they were tuples. They could be. OK, for. Y. Can you do like? Why wouldn't you just say like four cell in cells if I know, X I'm is greater than fancy. max? Oh, okay. All right. So cell in cells. X, Y, X. X, Y, y. Right. yes. Y is greater than V, and then V equals Y. Okay. I was trying to be fancy. I always try to be fancy. But I like this better because I understand it. It would have been clearer. I it think. would have been clearer if you had done it the other way? I think so. OK. But it's just not worth the mental energy right now. We're under time constraints. Do we need to say cell dot x, cell dot y and cell dot x? Oh, if. And those two should both be cell dot x. And line 19 and as well. I'm assuming our board is just positive integers only. Yeah, that sounds like something we can do. Sure. Yeah. This is, it goes this way and this yeah. way. Yeah. We'll have Cartesian plane only in the top right quadrant. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Is that is that acceptable? Yeah, totally acceptable. Okay. It's your world, man. But now we have you bounded our world. Well, it should have to be negative numbers too, then. Okay. But then we don't have a max width or a max width. I thought we weren't doing max with the max, right? No, no, we're doing it for the current render. 
Right, and if that's the case, if we're looking for a negative number, we need to look for the lowest. If the X or Y of the cell, we need to check if it's the lowest. And then what we're actually trying to get is the bounds. So we try and get the width of the board. What now, these are trying the to calculate. Values are, we're not bounding our world. We can just adjust, we can just divide it by 50, or divide it by two. But if a and cell is moving positions, you'll have a glider going like this. And eventually it's gonna hit zero, zero. And the glider can't go to negative one, one. Uh, unless we change the XY of everything else to push it up into the right, away from the glider that we can use to travel. All right, well our world is limited. The real yes. world is limited. All right. There are limitations in the world. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, we got max width and max height. So, now we can render. So wait, can we keep the unlimited world and you give me a couple minutes to fix it? I think I can do this with an unlimited world. Are you sure? Yeah. Well, I just want to see this. Okay. We just want to render it first. I just want to see stealth. I just want to see if this works. We got to run our code. Oh, it's on Python 2. You need Sorry. parentheses. Still do that. You missing a print up a little bit? No, I hate cool. the print statement. All right. I'm going over here. Can we run render at the bottom? And I'm just going to, yeah, I did actually. I'm going to Python our Conway. And we have an error with board render, print self oh, max yeah, go back down. Cells is not defined. Cells, self dot cells. Would be better actually. <laughs> if we made it iterable. Now we can just cell. iterate over self. Over self. Okay. Do you not have to implement next when you make something iterable? Uh, you do for it to be a proper iterable, but this should work. Okay. But I don't know, it's a weird Python 2, Python 3 thing. So we'll find out. All right, so I'm gonna save that and go back. Oh wait, yeah, I changed change the other references. All right, let's see if it runs now. Okay. Yeah. Zero height, zero width. All right, so let's, let's go back. And I wanna change this. Those are none, so x, if x, else, ran, random, dot, ran, int, uh, zero, two. What's our, what's our theoretical starting? 256? Sure. All right. Uh, start math. Did everything. That's weird. Ransom. Importing random. Uh, start max equals two fifty six. Right. Oh. If X cells. Why is it not working? Oh, we, we haven't instantiated any cells. Right. So let's do this. We have a board. Let's do the part where uh, you make me type things again. I mean, one more, one more, one more. But you realize this is now the Kenneth driving show and not at all pairing. I'm just, I'm, I'm taking, we're taking turns. Okay. Yeah. All right. You don't, you don't think so? Well, I feel like a little bit. I could put down my mic and walk over there, and come back in ten minutes and see Conway run. Oh no no no. Okay. I'm just I'm just getting it to a point where you can make it I, where I'm comfortable with you taking it and making it infinite. Okay. Yeah. Because I just want to see this render thing work. Right? right. But we've got to be able to put cells in it. So when a board is uh, after a board is created in the file when we run the script, we've got to start creating cells and adding it to the board. Right? That's what I'm doing right now. Yeah. But the cell is going to randomly do it anyway. A board has a new cell method. Because you're creating a dependency of a board on a cell now. And until now, we were injecting boards into the cells. We were cyclical, isn't it? It might not run. Well, I mean, it'll run. It's just 
might from an architectural start. perspective, we've created a dependency two different ways. Like yeah. the two objects depend on each other unnecessarily. I think we don't think it's a just... run because cell is reference is defined after. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, I don't think it'll run. So let's not do that. Ah, you're right. We I did that backwards. So we just want to do cell. Uh, this is not how I would build this game. So we want board dot render. We have board. We have uh, we have cell. So yeah. I just want to do for i in range. How many uh, cells? Forty. Forty cells. Uh, C equals cell. It already adds them to the board. Yeah. All right. So then let's just see if that works. But you have to pass cell a board. All right. You're right. Which we already have. Cool. There we go. Two hundred fifty-one. All right. Tag. So this bit down at the bottom, where I need to reload this file, actually. Why didn't it just automatically reload? Yeah, see, this is what they, this is what fancy stuff they were talking about. Lambda, you, I don't use lambdas. Oh, I see. You just do max cells lambda c dot x. You could be using lambdas to get. And the you can C. also use iter tools and stuff. But okay. I, don't, I don't mess with that stuff. I just write it. I just write it out. So we're making these new cells here. And I actually want to have a representation of those cells as well, which is, let's see here. Um, I actually want my little string thing to be on these cells now, so that I can just output them. I can have a, a way to render the, what we're doing with render right now is we're actually just showing the width and height. But I want to see on the screen a grid of characters. Yeah, I want that to be all be in the render method. You want it all to be in the render method? Okay. So then, inside of render... I thought the board would render itself out. Okay. Instead of the cells rendering themselves out, because they, they're in Well, I was order. just going to have the board print the cells, and the cells would know what they looked like then, when they were printed. But they, they're in arbitrary order. Right, okay. So now, what we've got to do when we're printing this is, do we build a two-dimensional array to hold them before we put them out on the screen, or we just... We have to have some structure to represent the map of our total thing. It's it's going to be starting at zero on the left side, and the right side is 256, and then probably we go down to 256, right? Yeah. And then you've got to decide. We could just write at arbitrary points on the screen, but I don't know how to do that in Python yet. Is that a thing that you can do? Can I just in Python say, at the fourth column over and the third row down, put an X character? There's probably some package or library that allows you to do this kind of thing. Well, I thought that's what the board class would do. Like an N curses? Uh, I just thought that's what the board classes would do. It would just get them all in memory and then print each, iterate over each line. It would just write the lines, printing a character at a time. It starts yeah. at zero, zero, and then writes them out. Yeah. So when we do that, though, we've got to have some structure, like a, a two-dimensional list, a list of lists with no. the rows. No. We can just... we can that, that would be the most efficient. Okay. But I think that we can just iter iterate over the every cells. cell as we go. So we'll just say four cell in cells. Yeah, exactly. All right. In uh, self. Actually, no, for column or for, for row. row. But see, these aren't organized. They're in a flat for row, list. That's fine. For row in range max height. Range self dot max height. So that gives us right each row. So now we have rows. We have rows. Row is assigned to zero right now. Right. So then you do for cell. So we're gonna find all of the cells that go in the zeroth row. So now we're gonna iterate over every cell that we have. It's just super efficient, but it'll work. So every for every 1 to 256, we're now going to iterate over every cell. Over every cell. We have 40 cells. We hit 40 times 256. Yes. Okay. For n, where n is OMG huge, then we iterate over each one. And we say for, um, now, now we say for cell in self? 
in self.sells. Oh yeah, for sell and sell. Okay. Yeah. If uh, sell.x equal row equals row, then oh, go above above for sell and sell. Okay. Do row equals uh, empty list. Uh, no, no. It can't be called row. It's going to be like. Uh, yeah, do like new row. New row. We've got no, no, new no, row. no, no, no. Do, okay, do. Uh, actually, no, that was right. That yeah, was right. New row equals. And then our dead character. Dead, our dead character? Yeah, what's our dead character? A dash and a plus? That? You have to put a space for that because emojis render weird on the command line. Only if they're double width, width emojis. This is a single width still. Okay. Uh, times. Oh, you, you don't want the space. You don't put space yeah. around? You can, but you don't. Uh, not from, well, I don't remember. Okay. So we got a times. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I think a space is proper, actually. Okay. Uh, times the width. Self dot max width. Self dot max width. Okay. So now we have a nice dead thing, and then we'll flip them on. We'll flip them on, and so then we're actually going to index into this new row because lit, because strings are mutable and indexable. We can yeah. go to the third thing. Thank you. Here's my coffee from Starbucks for Joanna. Nice. Thanks, Starbucks. Every single time, really. Okay. And I have, if cell.x, okay, wait, I'm up here. I've got, uh, so at this point, I need you to have a, you have make a, it concrete. Have I have max 251 skulls. 251 skulls across. And I'm going to go into here. If it's equal to row, then I say new row, and I want to index into my position cell dot. Wait, this is the x, x position. Equals happy face equals happy face yeah. if alive. It's already going to oh, be yeah. a skull. So above this, if cell is alive, what is the... Cell, cell dot state equals alive. Yeah. Single quotes are better than double quotes. Single quotes are better than double quotes. That's personal preference. It's a Pythonic preference also because you only ever would use single quotes unless you had to have an apostrophe in the string. Although in Python 3.7 maybe there is string interpolation or 3.6.5 has some form of string interpolation coming along, which I think requires double quotes. No. It doesn't. You can do the F string. Strings. Is it F strings? Is that a new feature? I feel like yeah. that's the old one. Oh, that is the new thing. is a new thing, but it doesn't require... You can do that with single quotes. Too. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. we're not like PHP. Okay, groovy. Or bash, I mean. Right. So if we are alive, then this is any emoji we want that is only one single width, which could be robot or angel or pancake or horse or ghost. Flames. Snowflake. Snowflake. Snowflake's a double width. See how uh, it screws up? It. Yep. I thought they were all double width. No, see, like pancakes doesn't do it. I wrote an emoji command line tool and I made them all double it. How about hearts? Because we love Python. Yes. So, we make it a happy smiley face if it's We're alive. Carried on Conway's game of life. Yeah. Nice. It's super fun. We're winning. Where it's not really a race and there's no way to win. Yay! We did it! I'm designing a very no, inefficient algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do Python, our thing, and, and work through our errors. This is like test driving, but with a test suite that doesn't do what we thought. You didn't tell because it to print. I didn't tell it to print. So after I've generated all this stuff. So then you print the row. At the end here. No. Print new row. Four row, print row. Print row, and then yeah, put friends. And I have an opportunity to end. And I can do an end equals, but it by default is a new line, right? Yeah, don't do that. Okay. 
Just, just do your crap. But I could actually put something in there. I wanted, if I didn't want it, I wanted a different delimiter. I could put another character in. Yeah, yeah. Typically need to do that. Okay, so that worked opposite of what is good. Oh, because we're still, hey, we're still putting out the. Um, no, we aren't. Oh, I'm print. I'm not printing new row. Did you just say to do new row? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the problem is that our console width is, is not that big, so you got to make the console very small. We've got our constants here at 40 then. And that'll be a 40 by 40. All right. That's pretty good. It works. Dead. Let's do now 20 we, so do it's random, all on the screen. Are, so 25 all, pixels. We have to do random life. Random life. Yeah. All right, let's make random life. I'll so, do this part real quick. All right, you do that part real quick. All right, so life factor. So the life factor, then we're going to use a range up to our life factor and randomly select one so we get effective percentage, like one to a hundred. Life divisor. Life divisor, okay. Equals, we're going to do a random, ran, is it, hey, Hansa, Hansa, Hansa. Hansa. Random dot rand, that's a random zero to one, right? Uh, yes, you will rend it. Rend int. No, I want to do zero to one. So I'm going to do okay. life divisor is 0. 0.2. That's probably two. Yes. Wait, you're in BIM again. Stop that. Go. Okay, I'll make it 0. 0.1 to 1. Yeah, 0. 0. 0.1. Point one. So 10% of our cells will start as alive. Now show me how to make that actually work. When a cell is created, it becomes alive. Random is between 0 and 1. We'll get a random decimal between 0 and 1. But not ever 1 from random. Oh, wait. I'm trying to, I'm asking, I'm not telling. It's I don't know Python. One. Zero to one float. Okay, <laughs> zero to one yeah. float, thank you. So, so it could be 1.0. Greater than. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. not exclusive. No, less than life device. There we go. So let's run it again. All right. No life. Because Wait. it says it doesn't support object uh, right, just We just assigned it. Run it again. String object doesn't. Did you save it? Are you in Python 3? Yes. Each other there's a list of strings and then you put one together at the end. Yeah, but we were just doing this. Oh, no, we never did that. All right, go ahead. Is, yeah. Is a okay, yeah, I was worried about that. Oh, that sucks. Why? Just put the skull as a single item list. Leave the multiplication that will work, and then at the end, you all you have to do is do uh, do a string dot join. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and no, the we're, and then we're indexing it and we're setting it, and then we just do new row dot join. That should work. Okay. Yay! Right. We have one percent alive. Now we have to implement the, the rules. That's the hard part. No, we have to prove to me that I want more life. I want 50% alive. 50? Yeah. Just to see it works. Whoa. I don't think it does. <laughs> it does. It's 50% of the diagonal. This is, this is called Jonin-driven development. Since we're not writing tests, I have decided I am your test suite. <laughs> I know, I've been writing tests all day, but we wanted to just play around a little bit. I mean, the, 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 as long as it's fun, it's right in this space. Fair it's, enough. It's yeah. just a beautiful, oh, we have, we're not doing a random seed either. How do you do a random seed? Random dot, random seed, uh, seed, set seed. Set comprehension? I was trying to do a set comprehension for you, but that's not what you want. Shall we Google a thing? Let's Google it. Yeah, just stop for a second. Hold on. I was already there. Okay, fine, go. 
We uh, there is a way to get the keyboard control back, and it is to say tag. If I say tag, tag. to you, then you're required to give it to me. You can immediately tag back. I know. But you've got to tag. Yeah, that's all the fun. That's, yeah, all the fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the whole point is to heckle, right? Yeah. That's why we have you a peanut gallery add at all. Python as a keyword. We need to add Python as a keyword. Just, we have yeah, a suggestion yeah, to totally add really Python. Yeah, Python. Yeah, there you go. Random set seed Python. Uh, also, random I would, seed. Yeah. I would wager that the random is not the issue. It's the rendering that's the issue. I know, but we're getting the same results yes. this time. Yeah, uh, there are probably a lot of issues with this. It's real bad. But <laughs> also, I think this is good. This is the seed will be set on random. Wait, you're actually choosing yeah, yeah, yeah. the random seed. <laughs> seven. Time seed no, 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 seven. No, no, no. Time go back, time. go back, go back and time do it. Time. Uh, what do we do? Yeah. Well, no, but that's going to do it every... We want to be able to recreate it, right? If we want to run it, take random. it from the arcs. We oh, show me. Each time. No, I want you to take it from the command line arguments. Take the first command line argument to Conway.py and make it the seed. Okay. I want to learn how to do this in Python because I'm going to write a Python script and I need to be able to take args from the command line. Well, I do it by hand. This isn't how you would do it professionally. This isn't how you do it for reals? If what? What are you doing? Well, I want I want to say Python space Conway.py space 7 and get the C to be 7. That way we can recreate errors from the command line. If our test suite is is me running the file. If I am the test suite and I'm just running the file, I want to be able to consistently recreate failures. This is the hackiest way to do this. That's great. I love it. Okay, we import system and then we take the negative two. No, minus one. It's the last system argument. Right. Because in a list in Python, you can index in from the other side as well. Yes. Can you index, can you loop back around? I've got a 10 item list. Does negative 11 take me to the last item? I don't think so. It, it ends over here. I'll get an out of bound error if yeah, I go down. You can tell it which, which, how many uh, intervals to, to go at a time. You can say, I want to, I want to inter iterate it two at a time or three at a time. I did see that. Yeah, it's colon, colon. I've already read half of Crash Course in Python, so I'm basically an expert. I already know how to do the iterating by twos, but I only know how to do list comprehensions. All other forms of comprehensions are a mystery to me. And I never learned how to do arguments if we have arguments. Well, we always will, right? Won't it do you? Yeah. All right. All right. Seven. <laughs> Good. So now we default to seven, and if I pass an argument on the command line that is five, I can recreate it from five. And this is the random C. The not it has to be bang equals instead of not. No, you know, take out not and put in bang equals. Not and bang equals have different semantics. So you put int around it? Yeah. If I want to cast a float, I type out float entirely, or is it FLT? Float. Float. List assignment out of range. We got some out of range errors. Yeah, it is really pretty. And we are very consistent about our, we are, I appreciate the consistency. Boss, the software is ready. It is very consistent. All right, let me, let me try and fix that. I'm going to try and figure out our problem here. It's in this logic with the rendering. So for row in range, we create a new row, and it has our max height, which is going to be 25. OK. So row is actually going to be some number 0 to 24. And we create a new row, and we multiply by the max width. So I think one of these widths should be a height, but maybe not. Yeah, x and y are reversed, right? Because this here is x, yeah. This this where we're indexing into the new row. So we're calling these things rows, and then I'm trying to index into them. But what we want to say is if 
cell dot y is equal to rho. So when we actually have, right? And then we'll have, let's just try that. Ba -ba -da -da! 999 is out of range, so that's no good. Why, why do we have an out of range error? The 999 has nothing to do with it. that's just our seat, but we're getting out of range errors sometimes. After it pits out the perfect square, it says off by one on cell dot x, yeah. It should be cell dot x minus one. All right. Well, you want to set them to minus one. Yeah. Well, if we're adding one and we were already getting an out of bounds error where we're only working in the positive number space, then it stands to reason that we, it is plus one. Because we're, with the out of bounds error we were getting is into zeros, right? Yeah. You were right, you were right. All right. No, you're winning. Yeah, winning. The, again, for the stream, we don't care who gets how far. The whole point is to talk about software design principles. Kenneth has chosen to do as Kenneth chooses to do with his stream, and that's totally fine with us. But generally speaking, it is not a race. No one is trying to win an implementation. I frequently get people who walk up to the stream and say, like, who got the farthest? I'm like, nobody, there are no prizes. Life is a race without an end. Enjoy the journey. The point is that we're talking about software design principles generally and practicing pairing because it's fun. Yes. Yeah. But it was many fewer lines of less confusing code. And test driven. And test driven, yeah. And I agree with you that you don't. <laughs> So, I am running this thing here and I'm going to start implementing some rules about it because I like rules. And every time that I tick the world into this next thing, well, we could just shell out to Lua. Okay. In instead of shelling out to Lua, we will proceed with the plan. And uh, we are going to go through all of ourselves. We're iterating over ourselves. So, sell in self. We are going to create a new cell, a new board. And then that new board, when we create it, is it going to have cells in it? I don't know if it is going to have cells in it. Hi. We met last year. How are you? Yes, we did. Yeah, I still I got texts from you. I am. I'm live streaming with uh, Pike uh, Conway's Game of Life. Yeah, let's come over here for real quick. Just, you don't want to say hi to the stream? Tell them about five. What, uh, Five up. Is it five up? It is five up. Yeah. So Melanie made an app called Five Up where you can go and sign up to get uh, text messages that make you feel good. And you can also send a link to your friends so they can put nice things about you. And on Five Up, someone tweeted at me, hey, I met you a couple years ago, or texted me, I met you a couple years ago at RailsConf. There's no reason you would remember me, but I remember you because you were so welcoming and it was my first RailsConf. And it like melted my heart because you did that. You you have created, I mean, at this point, probably a hundred thousand moments exactly like that for the world. Seven hundred or so a day. It's amazing. So you should go check out Five Up and thank you, Melly. You're welcome. Have fun, y'all. All right. So we are doing our cell in self. We're looking at each of these cells, Kenneth. Type some rules. You don't want to type the rules? All right, I'll do it. Okay, so what I want to do basically is find all of my neighbors for a cell. A cell doesn't know what its neighbors are, but if I were in a Cartesian plane, then I could do something like, right, I could do something like this. And so I would be saying like um, four X uh, offset in this. And then I would say 4y offset 
after the commas, oh I do, yes, our Pep8 will be angry. There's a Vim extension to help me with Pep8 learning. It's called what? Flake8, okay. And, oh like Flay? Like F-L-A-Y-C-A-T-E? Oh, okay, all right. So what I've done now is that I am using the X, Y offset to iterate in every position around where the cell is, but I need an efficient way in Python. So now I've got the cell, I'm gonna say like, mm -hmm. it's gonna be super inefficient, but again, we already have some ridiculous inefficiency in our implementations. Right, we just run it in PyPy. But you did turn off the caching that makes Python fast. I just wanted to put that out there. The bytecode thing? Oh, it just regenerates it from, it doesn't keep the bytecode. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Cool. So, um, you see where I'm going with this plan, right? Does this seem reasonable to you? So I can ask an a, a cell, I can say like cell dot, whoops. I can say cell dot x minus x offset. And then I'm going up or I'm going down. It's both. But is it is it easier if I make it plus? I feel like it's easier to reason about if I make it plus. It would work both ways though, right? Because it would then be a positive, it would negative the positive number and positive the negative number. More more intuitive. So we'll do offset. Okay, so then I need to do a thing. This is like, um, find me the cell at this x with offset and y with offset. Okay, so I'm gonna create a thing up here that is neighbors. Neighbor cells, so then we're gonna find all the neighbors for each of the cells. And what I really care about is counting the neighbors. I only need to know how many are there. So for each cell, <laughs> that would be easiest. All right, so I've got a list. It's neighbors. And then I'm iterating over each of these directions. So I don't have a way to find a cell right now based on its x, y position. Or I could go through every cell. Okay. So I'm going to have another loop here for cell in self. Or how would, how would I in the collection? Self is a uh, is a list. Find me the object in this list that responds to the x and the y that I expect. How do I do that in Python? Self is a list of cells. It's a flat list of cells. I want to find the one that has, it's an iterable of cells. I want to find the one that has the target x. Okay, here, I'll do this. We'll say target x equals x plus x offset. All right, target y equals y plus y offset. So in Python, if I have a list, self, how do I, yeah. But the X and the Y don't have a reference back to the cell themselves. So if I use the... 
I see. Okay. Cell X, Y, cell. I don't need this anymore. This is what I needed all along. Now I've got the X and the Y and the cell, and I have a way to go in there. Now you, now you want just the cell to so make another one. So Why do I want just the cells? What I want is, I want a dict, I want tuple cell in a dict, which I don't know how to make, but I start with these, right? Well, we, this should be the XY tuple part. The key is going to point to the cell itself. I want to give this dictionary x, y, and get a cell. So it would be cell x, cell y, with a space? No space. Cell? I see, like this, for cell in cell. Okay. And now I should be able to just do this thing where I say, um, that's a dictionary comprehension. I just learned my first dictionary comprehension. If we did it right. And also, when I, index into this thing now, I can do it like target x target y, yay tuples. So this is the cell that I found, and specifically I care if it's alive. I want to know how many live cells I'm surrounded by. and. This is not. Yeah. Or neighbor count? Do I actually want to keep the neighbors? Okay. Should we spell it like the British do? Are you out of time? Do you have to go? Oh, okay. Neighbors equals an empty list. But I count the dead parts of the list. Yes, I know that will be easy in Python, and I'm excited to learn how to do it. All right. So I now, at the very end of my method, this is totally not next. This is not what next is doing. This is a different method called count neighbors, or something like that, that gives us, that returns the number of live neighbors. So, yeah, so neighbors. For, for something in neighbors, for cell in neighbors, I want to get the, the number of these that are alive. It's called the uh, state equals alive. Is alive? Is it, are we going to get the alive cells? Okay. For each cell, we're going to iterate over all of the cells in neighbors now. I want three. If there are three neighbors that are alive. Wait, hold on. Let me save this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah.
of the neighbors Self or sell in self, I mean neighbors. This sell in this context, oh, we don't actually have our sell from, oh yeah, we do. But these are all, the, the, the scope for this variable sell that we're creating is the list comprehension, right? I can't even reference it on line 56 if I want to. Okay, so sell for sell in neighbors if, Cell dot state equals alive, else none. I don't. Right. Okay. I thought every time I did an if on the end like that, I had to do an else, but I was wrong because this is inside of comprehension. Oh, okay. Cool. Cell for cell in neighbors if cell is alive. So then that's going to be the alive count. So that's actually what we're going to return. to neighbor count, living neighbor count. That's a syntax error when I have a, oh, it's an extra paren. This. My key is a tuple. I didn't hear you, but speak up. I need to pass it a tuple here. Is this not a tuple, this thing that I've typed? I can't hear you, I'm sorry. I think, uh, like, you have a tuple in the first part. Yeah. Then, the, I think, uh, like, it's a, it's a tuple without a tuple, and also, uh, for what it matters to the So, so in order for a dictionary to function in Python, the key and the value have to be the same type of object. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, what I have here is that I am using a tuple as a key, and I'm using a cell as the value. And take this back out again? And then I just leave that like that? All right, let's just try it. Cool, works, great, thank you. So now I can get our neighbor count. Syntax is hard. Yeah, MVP, right? I like it actually. So we've got new board here, and we're going to populate the new board. We could just use other people's code instead of ever writing code. <laughs> Maybe we'll publish Conway.py. <laughs> you don't think we'll ship this? You wouldn't sign these commits? Okay. <laughs> so we've got new board. And now we take the old board. When we say next, it's going to make a new board and eventually return that new board. Oh, it'll just, it'll just take the cells from this board and then wreck our thing all at once. Okay. So we're going to say for, for cell in self, Well, if we mutate the cells as we move along, oh, the new board is how I was getting the new cells. 
But you're suggesting that instead of that, we just we just add the new cells to a list. Basically, we just copy the cells as we go through them. This actually makes this part super easy. So for cell in self, if cell dot living neighbor count. All right, so this is where we actually implement those rules we've got right here. This will be the only working implementation of Conway that I have created. Oh, right Assuming it works. Yes. If cell dot living neighbor count, why don't I have code completion? Because my VimRC is bad. If it is less than two, then cell dot state equals dead. Is that how we were killing them? And then we put the cell in there anyway, in the new one. Then we just toss the cell into the new, so this is our new cells, an empty list. And we just go, new cells, get in there. But it updated on the board, but we don't want to do that because we're going to go and iterate through. So we go through the first row, and when we come down, updating it changes the cells count. So. So what we want to do is we're going to say um, we're going to say death row, okay? <laughs> we have death row, and then we're going to say if the living neighbor count is less than two, then we put the cell in death row. Yeah. And uh, how do I copy this cell? I need a deep copy module. I import, is it part of standard lib? Okay, if it, was a, if it was a list, I could do this. Whoops. If it's a list, you can do this, or the, the slice with nothing. Yeah, all right. Oh, in Python 3, I can dot copy. <laughs> like this. No, we don't. The cell doesn't have any nested properties. It only has X, Y, and a live state. No, I'm copying the cell. So I'm adding cell. I don't actually want to do that. I want to add death row is the cell. I want the actual cell. And then at the end, I'm going to kill all of death row at the same time. And I'm going to also have a life row, which is the optimistic alternative to death row. That's fine at the end. But when I'm iterating through, yeah, that's fine. As long as I'm not still iterating through trying to figure out if a cell should live or die. I'm sorting the cells right now. You're in the dead pile. You're in the live pile. You're in the dead pile. At the end, I'm like, dead shall die, life, life shall live. On one cell I do, but the second that I go to the next cell, this cell dying right now will have changed the next cell's living neighbor count. Yeah, so what I'm doing is I'm just sorting them into piles to die and to live. We're just playing God for a second, and then at the end we'll be done. So we'll say if it's the cases where it's gonna die, if cell dot living neighbor count is less than two, and I wanna say or cell dot living neighbor count, can I say just or greater than three? I do have to do that, yeah. Then we add them to death row. Else, elif, elif, is that how you say that, elif? Elif, um, if it has more than three or less than two, it dies. If it has exactly three, all right. L if cell dot, if, if, L if not cell dot alive and cell dot 
living neighbor count is equal to three. If a cell is not alive and it has exactly three neighbors, then we put it into life route. And now we've sorted them into two piles where we have a living pile and a dead pile. Right? Oh, I can do, what is that called? Destructured assignment? Uh, since I, it's better to do it the other way. Destructuring assignment is, is different. Destructuring assignment is if you have a list with one and two, and you assign it. If I did, um, I want to know if this works in Python. Will X be one and, and Y be two? That'll work? Okay. All right, I was just curious about Python. All right, so life row and death row. Can I, do I need the second list over here or can they both just be equal to, I can just do this? I do need that other list. I see, okay. Oh. So you can use them just to make clarity or effect order of operations or something, but they are not necessary here to make it a tuple. You would put them in here? Is that a PEP8 thing? All right. Around this. Oh, I see, okay, like this. And that way we can see the rules clearly. I see. Oh, it does go after the three, I see what you're saying. And I think what I'm going to do... Of space here, I think. Oops. Then at the very end of that whole thing, we kill everybody. Kill everybody who should live and live everybody who should die. And then what does next actually return? It doesn't return anything. It'll return self. Okay. And so... Ooh, I like that. Okay. I'll just put that at the bottom so I don't forget it. Returning self. And in between, we go through death row. I, um, for for doomed in death row. <laughs> uh, oh, I could probably do this in a shorter form. No, I can I? I was gonna do like a one-liner to just kill everything in death row. All right, it's more clear, maybe. For chosen in life row, chosen dot alive equals true. 
Return self. Sure. Now we've got our board. We're going to say board.render. All right, and when I have it, I'm going to say time.sleep1 or something. That'll sleep for one second. So I want to go, um, help me make an infinite range. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought that there was a thing in Python where you could just count to infinity. You just keep counting. You could be like for range, one, comma, and it would just count until it broke. Okay. Right, thank you. And we are going to say render the board, sleep for one, and well, we don't have, well, we'll just sleep for one and uh, board.next here. We next, we render, we next, we sleep. Sure. Ah, next. <laughs> no, I didn't. I brought it back again, but I did not put self in it. Self is the most important. This is, I think, the, the Python motto. Self above everything, right? <laughs> Have you tried adding self? What's the Anne Rand? No, okay. I know, I call it, I can call it, I can't even say that word that you mentioned live on the internet. I can call it, where's your microphone? Oh my gosh. Well, good. No one, no one missed well, it. Well, no one heard anything that Kenneth said on our live stream here. No, it, is, I think it just fell off. Oh, just now? Okay. Hi. Hi. No, we have a cell object with no attribute living neighbor count. Where? Somebody whispered behind me that living neighbor count was not, or was a method, and I was calling it wrong. And then I was like, fine, it's a property. But then that was just silly. I should have just done this. And still, now, you're still going to get the error. Your face is going to get the error. Why am I going to get the error? You didn't because change it's it. cell. Okay, wait. What is that? Living a, what neighbor is that? Count is not on cell, it's on board. Which makes no sense. Count the living neighbors. Well, board is the only one that has a reference to the other cells. A cell can't. It, it's not being passed in a cell. How is, what does it count? How is it doing that? It's going into cells and it's finding. Oh, right. We don't actually have a cell. So. <laughs> how is this working? How is this working? The X here is cell is the X of our target cell. So living neighbor count has to take a cell. Yeah. And then this is going to be cell.x. Yes. And this is going to be cell.y. And then we're going to have here a cell. Yeah? Yeah. Living neighbor count, so it's self dot, or, or it's cell dot. You, you're just calling it bear. So that is not found in our dictionary comprehension. Here, 2420, there's no cell at 2420. Apparently. Because we only have a live cell, only have dead cells. Oh, this is the part where we're out of bound because we're adding one on the edge. We can guard against that. Um, Just catch the exception. Is that actually a thing I can do? The, yeah. The actual exception here being key error? Key error, yeah. On line 77. So yeah, where does it pend? So is it like a try catch block? Yeah, try, colon, and then do that. 
Oh, wow. How did I do that? That was something maybe I might have been involved. Sorry. No, no. Try. Try indent. And then accept. Accept. Go back. No, accept space. No, don't do that. That's bad. Don't do this. That, that's terrible. That's really bad. Accept space uh, key error. So this accept does all exceptions? And system errors and, and control C and, and control everything. C, it traps everything. It so traps the root, all the things. The root um, of the error hierarchy in Python is exception. Is it the class is called exception? There, there is a class called exception, yes. And is that the root node so that if I say. What? Base exception, Base exception. So base exception. You don't want to do that. Guess here. But that sounds like that's the default for accept to me because accept catches everything. Including like if there's a network exception. error, if you unplug your computer, like but it'll it'll. All exceptions inherit from base exception, right? I don't know. Maybe. They should. So what I actually want here is accept key error. Accept will just. I mean, pass. you could do it. You could make your own exception that doesn't inherit from any exception. Yeah, that's probably and a better would, form would be to make... Um, no, we well, don't want to do that. I know I don't want to, but, but I would do like... I want to just test my inheritance knowledge. If I had off-board error here... And to have it, have it be a value error or something. It would be like this, right? I would make it a value error. You would call it a value error? Yeah, because it's a value error. No, no, no. I said I'd have it inherit from value error. Oh, I see. Okay. Value error being somewhere in the hierarchy of a key error? Yeah. No, key this is just different in the hierarchy. Okay. All right. So except key error, raise off board error. But we we're not we don't do that. Is pass fine? We just yeah. carry on with our lives. We don't do anything. So pass. There you go. We use we use exceptions for flow control. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. This is the Pythonic way. It is. Use exceptions for flow control. Yes. It's the way it should be. Because exceptions are good in Python. Wait, are you? I'm. I'm trying to decide if you're serious. I actually have it. I'm. You're, I'm you're blowing up you my I'm world serious? if yeah. this is true. It's, it's I said better to ask for forgiveness than to ask for permission. That's what this is. Oh, okay. So in in Python, using errors as except as flow control is totally like. Oh yeah, it's comes up. Okay, and no sarcasm. No sarcasm. All right. No. I'm not going to. They don't do that in. They don't do that in Ruby. Yeah. So. so the, much cleaner code if you went to wanted to check instead target x and target y is in like y 90 percent of the time it will be there and this is truly an exceptional situation hence exception and just go with it i am in We're all right, cycles, even, right? <laughs> I mean, the whole reason that i'm learning a new language is to learn other ways that people write software right i'm learning new paradigms and this is like a very fundamental part of what I've been taught for seven years is you do not use exceptions for flow control under any circumstances. Uh, I, I regret that as Python. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, I, I actually wouldn't call this flow control. You're just recovering from an exceptional situation yeah, yeah. that you no. know of. Yeah, and this is a thing that I might actually do. In, uh, but I, if I had a bunch of different things and I was like, if this error comes, go that way. And if this error comes, go that way. And if this error comes, go that way. That is a thing I would never build. Try, no, exactly. Not, neither would you in Python unless it's the, uh, it's the error handling. Right, so okay. You call it, you, if you had any like meaningful code in the accept key error that's not handling the error, then I would say that, yeah, you're doing something wrong. Okay, all right, good. So we've got this here. And now we are going to run our code again. It's ticking. It's so ticking, and it's not changing anything, but it's good. And the the one thing that I want to change is that I want a sysclear. Um, I don't know how to do that. Sys.clear. Is that a thing? I decided it is. Something like that. Could be OS. Um, clear. Terminal sys Python. I don't think there is an official way to do that. We get the print button. Yeah. Print this. So, how to write code generally speaking? Go to Stack Overflow, copy the first thing you find without reading, paste <laughs> into your code. This is going great. Uh, why? 
Why am I having such a hard time with my Vim here? Oh, and there's my class again? Do you have like a nested? What is even? What's going on? I don't know. Okay, give up. I think that's what I want. I have to give my talk soon. You have to give your talk soon. Yeah, you should. Is. You should be and there. What? Soon. Soon. Yeah. I think it's at two thirty, two fifty. Okay. And it's like uh, I have no idea. It changed. Our rules are broken. But it changed. Did you see it change? It only did it. It only did it for one tick, though. But I think it's decided this is a static state. Oh, okay, so I can run it again. So it's working. Yeah, it's working. It's not. It's not correct, but it is working. Let's run it with a real high uh, life divisor. Yeah. Like forty. The life divisor is a little wonky. I didn't see like a quick step. Yeah. Yeah, it is stepping again. I think though, we could actually. All right, I want a, a count of how many times I've run in here. So I guess I'll just do count plus equals one. So I'll have a count outside. And then I'll um, print or board, render the board and print the count. Yeah. Yeah, friends, friends. Thanks. How are you closing Vim without, how are you backgrounding Vim? Oh, control X? Control Z. Control Z, yeah. Yeah. So. It's devolving to this state. Our, our random divisor, our code is very broken, but we have a thing that, that changed the number of cells on the board. That's good. And I'm calling it a win. All right, high five. Also because it was fun. It was very fun. But it was long and I feel like you gave me way more time than you promised and I am eternally grateful. Oh, it's okay. Anytime. I really appreciate you being on the stream with me. It was really fun. It's very fun. I'm gonna push this broken implementation up on Kenneth Wright so we can work on releasing it as a are Conway you, Pi package. Are you, gonna re, are you gonna push the repo up with all the people who did it? Yeah, all of the people's different ones here. So let's see here, I've got my, yeah, yeah, yeah. You gonna commit this? Quit, um, QA is quit all. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Kenneth. Uh, okay, I know where that is. That was over by like Starbucks, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, give me a hug goodbye since you quit us. Oh, stop it. You quit, you guys quit me. I don't know if that's true. Are we still live streaming? Yeah, we're still live streaming, but 